In healthcare, we often have to work with unfamiliar team members at a moment's notice. That's why it's important to know your team. To prepare for a crisis, we need to answer the question of who would you want on your team, especially if those team members don't know each other. Many of us have heard the expression that there is no I in team. And I think this concept is an important one as we try to figure out what makes a perfect team. We need to remember that our team in a crisis will be part of an unpredictable environment that categorizes the complex adaptive system. When we walk into a medical crisis, we'll likely not be alone. In fact, we'll be surrounded by other members of a potential team, other nurses or other physicians who we may or may not know. In these circumstances, we need to prepare to work with each other and we need to know each other. Watch this scene unfold where teammates introduce themselves and their roles at a moment's notice. We're stretched thin today, so let's please go around and just clarify our roles. I'm Dr. Boyd, I'm running the event. Daniel, I'll be documenting and helping with meds. I'm Diane, I'm the bedside nurse. Hernan, resident EM, guess I'm on airway. Now, let's imagine for a moment that we could choose anyone to be a part of our perfect team in a crisis. Who would we pick? Someone who's intelligent with a high IQ? Someone who's motivated? Someone who's extroverted? Someone with experience? Or would we pick people who always work together? The company Google wanted to investigate this question. In their quest to build the perfect team, they began to study why certain teams were more successful than others. What they realized is that the who didn't matter. It didn't matter how smart you were, how much experience you had, or the source of your motivation. What mattered is how team members treated one another. Google found that good teams do two things. Number one, members speak in roughly the same proportion of time. There's an equality in the distribution of conversational turn-taking. Simply put, one person doesn't dominate the conversation. And number two, good teams had high social sensitivity. In other words, team members were able to tell how other members felt by the tone of their voice, facial expressions, and other nonverbal cues. Together, equal conversation and social sensitivity equals psychological safety. In 1999, Amy Edmondson coined the term psychological safety as a team climate characterized by interpersonal trust and mutual respect in which people are comfortable being themselves. We believe that having high social sensitivity facilitates our ability to know the skills, to know the weaknesses, and to know the strengths of unfamiliar team members. Knowing your team also means being curious about team members. This requires direct and clear language. During a crisis, we're surrounded by many people with different skill sets. The anesthesiologist, for example, will be skilled at airway management and can take on the task of intubation, while the surgeon can be asked to open a chest or an abdomen. In this case, we're assigning a role based on knowledge, skills, training, and profession. Sometimes these roles are clear, other times they're not. For example, both an anesthesiologist and a surgeon can place a central line. In these cases, it may be worth asking in direct language, who is more comfortable doing a particular procedure? To know our team, we need to be curious and we need to use direct language. Watch this interaction between Dr. Boyd and Hernan. In this scene, Dr. Boyd prepares for the crisis by directly asking Hernan, about his comfort level and skills to perform a task before the crisis unfolds. Hernan, resident EM, guess I'm on airway. Are you comfortable intubating if you need to? Yes, but if difficult, we should probably get anesthesia's back up. 